Hey everybody, it's your man Tight coming to you with another true spook story. Now before we begin, I would like to ask that you go and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with all your families and friends if you're feeling not robbery. Now, let's get on into this here story. I think you guys are gonna like this one. Well, this story is gonna take place uh, in the Orlando area, right off of Ivy Lane Road, more so on Ortman Drive. There's a set of apartments over here off of Ortman Drive. Uh, the address is 34 Ortman Drive or 14 Ortman Drive. You Google either one and uh, you'll see these apartments there called Cherry Oaks Apartments. Well, these apartments are known to be mystical, kind of haunted, if you say. There's not many units, and there's been, I don't know, there's not many units there, and a lot of the residents, when they move in, they kind of never move out. They end up dying there, living there for 30, 40 years, perishing in that little square block. Uh, there's two practitioners of ritualistic magic. I don't want to use the term voodoo because uh, they give it a negative conversation. But I'm going to say they practice dark magic. Uh, one is on the entrance when you first drive into the the complex uh, upstairs second door that's his house and the second one is at the end of the other uh, strip apartments upstairs the very last house uh, there's a man in the first one and there's a female in the next one now, I don't know if these two ever get along, ever talk, but this is where they're at. Now, tenants will move in these apartments and out of these apartments periodically, but typically the ones that move in, they stay. They stay there and they never leave. I've seen people, as I was growing up with a kid and walking home from school or walking to my auntie, I've seen like the same people grow up in there they'll come out sit on that porch you'll see them fan fanning flies off their ass and you know everything in their life is wake up go outside sit on the porch cook eat go to sleep and they they're raising children there the children grow up in these two-bedroom apartments it's, it's creepy as shit and it's crazy and nobody fucks with them when i say nobody fucks with them if you a kid or you grew up in that thing and you're in the Orlando area and we find out that's where you was raised, boy, you got a free pass to walk where the fuck you want to walk in every hood. I mean, it's just that creepy. Now, let's get back to these apartments. So I told you uh, there's two uh, practitioners of magic, a male, uh, a male warlock, which practitioner, he lives in the first uh, strip apartments and his door is never closed for as long as I can remember you can walk past and you can look upstairs at his house and his door will be wide open he had some kind of black purplish curtains there with beads and everything blocking the entrance but his door is always wide open same thing with the other sister that lives in the other scatter sites Close it remains open. So I'm driving around there. Well, I'm well. Me and Grandma, we we decided to take a shortcut because Grandma lived off Mercy Drive around by that time. And if you take Mercy Drive straight up, cross over Colonial, and then cross over Old Winter Garden Road, uh, almost like you you're gonna run right in Ormond. And if you keep on going, you could just go ahead and go straight. And then the road, you'll see the apartments to your right. Then the road will start bending like a just a quick little crooked letter S. 
and you'll be none past them. If you don't look too good, you run right past them. So one day, Grandma and I were driving from Mercy Drive. I'm in the car rocking with her. She had just got her some Hagen Dad's ice cream, and she got me a little strawberry shortcake, and I remember it. it was so damn good. So as we was passing by the haunted apartments, I see my grandma hit the gas real hard in the car. She flowed that bitch out. And I'm like, Grandma, what's going on? I say, this is this is a private street. Don't you can hit a kid. She like, I don't ever want you to go to that motherfucking place though. Them bitches in there, they nasty. They just uh, hanked it. I don't ever want you to go to them to see them janky bitches. Don't care what you do in life. Never ever go in them their apartments. I said, yes, ma'am. So we all knew from when grandma used to tell all her kids and grandkids, the, the them apartments are just soul suckers. And I'm going to be real and straight up. So, you know, time passed as I got older. Grandma never even liked going down that street. She would just rush for time. So she had to take a shortcut. She wanted to avoid the light. So as I grow up, I'm doing my thing. Learning how to maneuver through the thing. I'm about 16, 17 years old. I got me a nice little beach cruiser. We chilling and riding them, chasing skirts. Me and my homeboys going to the lake to go fishing because they had a big old lake behind there. You know, I had got me a little net fish, a little bucket, hooked it to the bitch. Old farmer Hancock riding this bitch. And so we going back there to go behind the lake and we gonna cast some nets, cast some fish, bring it back. So as we back there, we done jumped the dude gate and we done went over there to the little dock because they had a boat launching dock because it's a lot of expensive houses on the opposite side of these apartments. Uh, so that's how it worked. So we over there, we throwing the fit, throwing the net, throwing the net. And I kept seeing uh, my homeboy that I was with, he kept looking back at the apartment. He said, man, you want to go over there? I said, no, nah, bro. I said, my grandma said we can't go over there, so let's not do no dumb shit. She'll never find out. I said, bro, I ain't worried about her finding out. I said, Grandma, I said, don't go there. And you shouldn't go there, man. And he's like, fuck that shit. We been living here, man. And everybody said we can't go in the apartments. I'm going to go in the motherfucking apartment. I'm just going to go walk around. I said, I just want to look upstairs, see what I can see. I said, well, that dude keep his door open. And Grandma say he into some heavy shit on magic side. I said, and that sister over there. She always, like, sit, got her door open, but she sit in the door, and you could see her silhouette and shit. I say, she's never moved all day and all night. You can, like, see her 2, 3 in the morning. You pass by, you'll see her ass just sitting there with the little cigarette lighting up and shit. She never moved, never go to the bathroom. I don't know. He say, man, stop being superstitious. Stop being stupid and crazy. I say, all right, look. So we, we done caught about six or seven fish. Oh, yeah, these, and they were some big old motherfucking fish, probably some mullet or some Nile perch, I don't know. They were just big fish. So we, like, walk around that bitch, and next thing you know, my friend said, come on, man, let's just drive, let's just, just, just park our bikes and just walk around the bitch. We ain't even, we can walk around the back and just look up. So I think he was looking to steal something from these people because, keep in mind, when you move in the apartment, that's your whole life. And people would have bikes outside, barbecue grills outside. They would just have a bunch of random shit sitting outside. Toy cars, G.I. Joe toys, He-Man toys. So I think, and, and like little fake BB guns and shit, uh, Nerf guns. I think he was just trying to go steal the gun because he, he knew how to maneuver. So he had done this before. So my silly ass and that, uh, can't let my homeboy go by himself. You know, so I would lay my bike down next to the little green tank, the little power tank outside day unit. And I say, okay, man, let's walk. So we walk in the outside perimeter. When we start walking the outside perimeter, it had to be like around by summertime because we saw two like water moccasins or two snakes twined up like they were sexing each other. I think they, now that I'm older, it's called like the snakes was having sex because they was wrapped up with each other and they were just rolling in the grass where we were walking behind the house so the shit spooked me the fuck out big time because you know I don't, I don't fuck with snakes unless I'm in a trance and so bam so I said oh shit look at them snakes and they were big so he jumps and he like oh man it's scary 
Now, mind you people, I told you, the, 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 the spiritual practitioner cat, he kept his front door open all day, all night. Never closed that bitch in 30, 40, 50 years. It just stays open. Hurricane, storm, drain, it stays open. He, after we saw the snakes mating, we started screaming, jumping up and down, oh shit, and we decided to run back to our bikes because, you know, that was enough for me. So I bent it on him. I jetted it on him. Man, fuck this shit, pimping. Boom. I'm hawking it to the motherfucking bike. So as we had to pass by his apartment, he's outside on the balcony just looking down and if I could describe this person uh, think about one of them brothers from Nigeria low haircut kind of like balding at the top with a little bit of hair around the sides very thin high cheekbones and he had like his hands was like very arthritis looking very arthritic fat and and, and bulky and but he was a skinny person and just had those bone joints looking in his hand and he was looking at us and he didn't say nothing but he had a scar on his nose sort of like if somebody took a gouge out his nose and it healed so he had a scar on his nose and he was just looking down at us but when he when I looked up at him and I looked into his eyes his eyes was like red like fire red not like red like scary the color red but if the sun was a hit Hit your brown eyes just right and it give you that red glow almost like a cat or an animal in the dark. But this is like two, three day, I mean two, three in the afternoon. So he I look up and I'm running. He looked down at us and he just staring at us. And with a slight little smirk, he like smirks at us and he like, bring me a fish. Now people, listen to what I'm telling you. We heard, he whispered this shit, but it sounded like thunder in our ears. Bring me a fish. So now, we terrified of the water markets and thinking they finna come get us because we done interrupted their mating. And we didn't give a fuck about them water markets. It's fucking, we was terrified of this dude. So as we running, we stop in mid-flight. As we stop in mid-flight, I pointed at the bucket. It's like a trance had taken over me. I pointed at the bucket and I said, them fish, he said, bring to me now. And people, I couldn't even help myself. So me and my friend, we walked real slow to our bikes and we looked in the bucket and we, you know, unhooked the bucket from the handlebars and we walk upstairs to the dude's house and we walking real slow. But before we unhooked the bucket, I could hear the, I could hear the grass rustling the two big snakes had start, stopped fucking and they was coming to us so I'm shaking them like I say sir the snake they gonna bite us them moccasins they chase you and family this man was so powerful he looked down and I'm looking up at him and I look back at the snake he waved his hands backwards he's told the snakes go away he waved the snakes off he said ka he didn't even say go he said like ka ga a bra some real short and the snakes stopped coming to us and they literally did an about face and turned around and went back toward like the water in the grass, the little part of water in the grass and went back to doing what they were doing, I'm assuming, I don't know. So he said, bring me fish. So we go up there and I didn't go in his house, but my homeboy did. So I said, you gonna get in the fish? He's like, man, he, you, you told us to go get the motherfucker. I'm like, man, you get the bitch to fish you. Let's go. I said, my grandma gonna kill me, bro. She find me up here. She like, let's just get this nigga this fish because I got to. And say, then we just don't come back here no more. I say, we just avoid this whole street like everybody else do. And I'm like, okay, then, cool. We gonna do that, bro. We gonna do that, bro. So we had got a plane because we was out of his sight. But soon as he came to the door, he told my homeboy and me, he said, Come in, enter. So I was a little bit more spiritually tough than my homeboy, I would like to say. But my homeboy walked in the house. He said, place the fish here. And he had went in there and got him a, a bowl of water, one of the big plastic bowls of water. I could see everything from the, you know, the, the part in the curtains. So 
my homeboy dug his hand in the thing and he grabbed the fish by the gills and he put it in the bowl. He put a second one in the bowl. And he, I'm, I'm standing at the door. He said, you come in. And I shook my head, no. And he said, hmm. And he touched his hand on his chin and lifted his head and lifted her head, chin up while he had his finger on his chin. And he turned his head to his right shoulder real slow, like saying, hmm. He said, okay, you can stay. I know why you stay. But my homeboy was in that trap with him, so I wasn't going to leave my homeboy, so I stayed on the stairs. And my homeboy went in the house with him, and he said, you wait till I talk to him. And he goes in there and he talks to my homeboy. And my homeboy in there for like 15, 20 minutes. So I don't know what he, I don't know if he raping him. I don't know if he hexing him. I don't know what he doing. So my homeboy emerged and he like looking all pale white, chills to his bone. And he was like kind of shaking and his head was wet and he smelled like ammonia. And I'm like, bro, you all right? He like, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. He said, I'm cold. I'm cold. I just want to go home. I said, all right, man, give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. We finna, we finna flex. So as we walking downstairs, the guy walks out and he points to my friend. He said, if you need anything, you come see me. You are under my protection. I own you now. No, I don't know what the fuck happened. Preep, I can't say what happened. I ain't going to even speculate on this shit because it's terrifying to me to even fucking say this. So, you know, me and my homeboy go back. So I ain't tell grandma this night. I said, grandma gonna kill me if she find out I even stepped foot on this property. So I'm sitting up there. So my homeboy, so about two, three days past, four days past, my homeboy, he, we see him at school and shit. He all chilling. He all chilling, happy, go lucky. Nah, we both was kind of awkward, shy with chicks. We 16, 17. We trying to learn how to get up on some pussy or something. So my homeboy, he just had this flap out of me. Like, what's up, mom, chick, cha, cha, ha, ha. He was dancing. He was the star of the school. All the chicks was on him. I mean, he was, listen, I ain't lose my virginity till I was like 18, going on 19. This motherfucker was sitting up there hitting them motherfucking chicks like it was nothing. I mean, he, he, he we both 17 at the time, and he running through their ass. It's like anything he wanted, he got it. And he said, man, you crazy. You should have went in. You should have went in. I'm like, no, nah, grandma said don't go in. So this shit was like this for a long time, man. This boy had golden magic on him. I don't know what it is. So now I'm in my like early 20s, 21, 22. I got a baby now. Child support fucking with me real bad. Grandmama, she wasn't trying to do anything in the child support system with me. So I knew, okay, if this dude got what he want, you know, maybe I could go and see him too. So, I mean, I, I th I, yeah, I think I had just got in the car. So I drive past there and I pull up in the driveway, but I didn't get out the car right under his house. He come outside and he look down and he just smile. And he do the same old little head twist like, hmm. So I back up and like flush it. I'm like, fuck it, I ain't, I ain't tripping. Grandma say don't do it. I feel like I was cheating on grandma because I was going behind grandma back. So I say, fuck it, child. I just got that child support letter when it seen the judge and they had me paying an obscene amount, you know, for my only kid at the time. So I'm like, this is crazy, man. Bitch, I work for a mobile gas station. I ain't got this type of money. So I go in there again. So now it's thundering and lightning outside, but no rain, just the noise and the light flashing. So I pull up and I park in front of his house. He don't come outside this day, but the old lady that's in the other one, she finally gets up out of that chair. And only thing I saw was her hand stick out the window and she waved me over there to her. So I get out my car, I lock it, and I walk up there and I walk to the stairs. As I walk to the stairs, I'm terrified, y'all. And I'm like, Grandma gonna kill me. I ain't terrified of what I'm gonna find because I understood magic. So I walk over there and walk up them stairs. And she says, how you doing? I say, I'm okay. She say, you are not. I say, I'm not okay. She say, you, you need help? I say, yes, ma'am. She say, what you willing to pay the spirit? 
I say, I, I say, I don't give up my soul. She say, so you know something. I say, my grandma, I gunned you. Oh, I know Gunju. Gunju did good work for me. She helped me out a lot. You her grandson? I said, yes, ma'am. She say, so. Bring me back $450 by Friday, and I'll take care of your child support issue. I ain't keeping my eye and tell her nothing that was going on. She looked me in the face. So I walked down the stairs, was terrified, and I'm like, damn, this lady know grandma. She gonna snitch on me and shit like that. But the pain of what I was going through with the court system was fucking with me heavy. So I got my little paycheck. I think I sold, I think I sold some of my Nikes. I Nikes were cool back then. So I sold a pair of Nikes for like 60 bucks and shit. And I started wearing some, my sister BKs, some old BKs my sister had in the closet that she didn't wear. So I started rocking them bitches. I got picked at at school. I mean, not at school, like I picked that at work and shit. But I started rocking the bitches, so I had got her the 450, so I went in there. So, first thing she do, and here we go, people. She take this big, giant board. She take me to the back porch. She take this big old, giant board. It had all kind of designs and trinkets on it. And, it. and it had three holes carved in it. Not holes, like gouges. And I seen her put... Uh, I seen her put gunpowder in each one of the holes. And when she put gunpowder in each one of the holes, she took a, a pigeon or a quail, one of these little birds out of the cage she had, and she soaked that motherfucker in some kind of strong, watery ammonia solution. The bird feathers were saturated. And she took the bird, and the bird was alive this whole time, and she just set the bitch on my head. <laughs> Pressed that motherfucker on my head. And the bird was like, I could feel the feet scratching and the wings flapping, but she had the thing part. And she say, stand over this. And I scrabbled the motherfucking board. And I was standing up there and the water just running down my head and my clothes. And she was like, don't move. And she started saying this prayer. Then she took her hand off the bird and the bird was just sitting on my head like it wasn't shit, people. I can't make this up. So... She was like, da, 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 da. she said say her magical incantation, and she lit the first one. <sighs> keep in mind, I couldn't look down at the smoke because the bird would have fell. She said, keep your eyes straight. Do not move. What? Do not move your neck. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever I do, she said, it is not me. It is spirit, and you don't move a muscle. So I'm terrified, but I understood spirituality. So I'm looking straight forward. And the bird didn't jump from the fire. I feel the heat from the gunpowder flashing. It. The smoke going up my nose. The smoke going all under my arms. She would come grab me. She would tell me to bend my arm this way. And I still know the symbols that she made me do. Uh, and I, I keep that a secret, people. But every time she lit the thing, she would move my arms in three different positions. And boom, boom, boom. And it's basically Egyptian magic. Boom, boom, now that I know it, I've been studying. Boom, boom, boom. She'll do that. So on the third one, she lit the first one at the top in front of me, the one in back of me second, and then the one that was directly under my nuts and dick and genitals. So that was the one she lit. And when she did that, she took her right hand and she, after the smoke had cleared, she took her right hand and she grabbed my nuts. Held them bitches in her hand. I didn't get a sexual incantation from her, a sexual feel. And she squeezed them bitches just enough not to make me fall. Just enough pain, like a, she put a grip on them. And she started saying the incantation. And then she took her left hand, put it on top of the bird. And she pressed down. And she was, she was just saying all kind of incantation. So now I'm about shaking. I got a piss. I'm scared. I'm wet. And she said, ah, ah, ah. So then when she took her hand off my genitals, people, I'm not making this shit up and I'm being transparent. So she took her hand off my genitals and took her hand off the bird. She waddled back in front of me and she sat down in the chair 
and she just kept starting to rub on her titties and rub on her vagina, and she like, ooh, ha, ha, and she started looking at me like a temptress devil woman, like she wanted to screw me and shit. And, but she wasn't nothing that I would screw. Older lady, roughed up and shit. And witch lady, you know, I just, it is what it is, fuck it. So, I'm scared you hear that noise, I'm fucking scared. <laughs> I gotta stop recording these bitches at night, y'all. <laughs> fucking plane fall over now, I'm terrified. So, so she got, so she did that shit for like two, three minutes. And she stood up and she like, start, she get this feather duster and she start, dusting herself off and she started saging herself hiya, hiya, hiya. she started doing that so she said take off your clothes get naked so I'm like oh fuck man I said man I ain't finna fuck this old lady man this shit ain't happening and in my head I was the one thinking like I ain't gonna fuck her you know cause I ain't never happened I mean I had had my nut cracks but I ain't never hit no old head so I'm like, oh, I'm like, man, I ain't even got no condom, man. This bitch gonna get me to screw her and shit. I don't know what she got, man. She old, she may not even be clean or catch clap. You know, but in the, the fucked up part about it, I was so in a spiritual trance that, you know, shit, I wanted to get that pain point off me, so I would have knocked her ass off. But she was like, take off these clothes, take off these clothes. So I'm like, okay. She gets up, she slides the board from under me. I take off my drawers. Take off my clothes, take off my shirt, shoes, socks. All well, I didn't have on those shoes and socks to begin with, but I took off everything. And she said, "Put them right there." And as soon as I put the clothes in the corner, in this little metal bin she had, she pulled Florida water and some other shit on it, and phew, clothes on fire. Now, all while I was doing this, the bird never left my head. The bird was alive, people. It was sitting up there, prunch on my head. So after all that, all of a sudden, I felt something run up my spine like the kundalini was drawing something out. And until it got to the top of my head and I got a a big old hit, I got a big rush of light. I'm about to pass out and fall out, but I wasn't moving. It was just a lucid ass fucking movement. That's when the bird stood up, jumped off my head, jumped into the circle that she had drawn for the bird to get in like clockwork. And the bird went there, and the bird started eating some kind of bird seed, and then it just took a big old shit and died. She's like, oh, you good. You good. And she say, you go home and sleep. I'm like, yes, ma'am. I have to walk down here in the middle of this fucking apartment, butt-ass naked, shit swinging. And I was in shape, so I ain't, I wasn't too shaming. You know, your, your boy, your man built. I'll leave it at that. So I ain't got too much shame in the game. You know, I'm working with something. So I walked down this shit swinging, pale as a motherfucker, all the energy script out my ass. So I get in my car, crank that bitch up, and boom, I go home, lay down, I'm asleep. Slept two, three days, miss work. Slept two, three days. Wake up, I'm feeling real good. I get summons to go to court about two, three weeks later. I get inside the courthouse. They like, hey, Mr. Tyke. I say, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, y'all, and all that shit. They're humble as fuck. I see what well, we made a grievous mistake. I don't think you can afford to pay us $75 a week for one child. That's too much. Are you only making $10 an hour? I say, that's it. I say, I don't, I say, and I'm trying to, you know, I just got out. I'm trying to do something with my life, go to college or something. I'm like, you ain't got to explain nothing. We're going to reduce this down here to $25 a week until further notice in the courthouse. You had your good day and they hit the gavel. Court case lasted less than five, 10 minutes top. I'm like, whoa. So I walk out of the courthouse, baby mama see me, she flaking, she upset. Ra rah, 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 whoop the whoop the whoop the whoop. Now this shit is finna get serious, people. This is where it gets serious. I told you what happened to me. This is shit in my home, but it's finna get real serious now. You got your popcorn? Go on, clutch your pearls, lady. This shit finna get real. Now, years pass. Now granted, I had other kids, and child support was on my ass real heavy. And I never went and seen her again for this because the experience was too traumatic for me. Seeing a bird jump off your head and die and fall over was wild. 
Now, before I get into the part where I'm telling you how this shit affected my baby mama, let me get back to my homeboy. Back, back to that episode. So now my homeboy, he's chilling. He doing everything. He fucking whole. Now we same age. We in the adult world. This nigga making babies. This nigga making babies left and right. Motherfucker had like six or seven kids at the age of 22. He fucking. He got him a nice little Buick. He doing this thing. I ain't got nothing but like one kid at the time. So he doing this thing. So he was like, I said, man, you want to hang out? Let's go to the court, play some play some ball with sticker bush in them. And he like, no, nah, man, I got to go take a, a package somewhere. I said, what package? He said, yeah, I'll be back. So, you know, I said, well, shit, let me ride with you, man. You know, I'm trying to be nosy. He said, all right, let me drop you off at the washer right here. Because the apartment is up the road from the wash. He said, let me drop you off to the wash. I'm finna go to a voodoo dude house. And I, I got to drop off something to him. So I'm thinking he finna drop off some cash, you know, something like that. I'm like, okay, cool. Go ahead, drop the shit off the voodoo, man. I chill. You know, handle your business, home boy. Now, so he goes and he drops off the shit to the voodoo man house. So I get curious. What he dropping off? I'm asking him. But I realize he didn't take no money with him, no paper with him. He just took like a, like a, uh, a brown paper bag, but it had like socks in it, cause it was real soft socks or some kind of cotton clothing in it. So he takes it and he hands it to the dude, and I'm just to speculate, cause I had started gaining the psychic ability too. So I follow him scrying wise, and I see him go up the stairs, and I and I'm imagining with my scrying that he handed the dude. So. He drive back around. I'm sitting at the at the stove. And they got me a fago. And he said, come on, man, let's ride. So I hop in his whip, flushing. But I said, what you gave? What you took him? He said, man, he said, I'm going to be G with you, bro. He said, all the hoes I'm fucking. I've been taking their little panties and semen over there. And, I mean, I've been taking their panties and little shit over there to him. And said, he, he putting them to work. So he gonna put that energy to work and shit, and that's how I get all this money. That's how I, I can slang dope like it is. I can do what I do. I say, oh man, I say that's wrong. I say I'm finna ask my grandma about this. He like, man, keep your grandma out of my business, man. That lady motherfucking nuts, bro. She gonna get on my ass and say I like Gammy, cause he would call her Gammy. He was like, I like Gammy. I say, bitch, what you doing wrong? And he like, man, I ain't gotta do this shit for a little bit. Because I'm finna go to college, I'm finna play ball, and this man is building my energy up so he can protect me as I go play football, and I'm finna be in the NFL. He was saying all that kind of crazy shit, because the nigga, was, he had the body of it. So I'm like, cool, I let that shit slide. So now he gone to college, I think he went to Texas State, something like that. He in Texas State, you can see him on TV playing college ball and shit, we repping him like it ain't nothing. I ain't going to say his name because I ain't going to put him out there. But if you could Google anybody from Orlando, Florida that went to Texas State around by the early 2000, 2001, 2003, that span, you'll probably see who he is. But I'll leave it at that. So, after he in college, I went and told Grandma, I said, Grandma, I'm grown now. She can't beat me. I said, Grandma, you know... I went into them apartments and I had them people like pray on me. I was going through child support and shit and they prayed on my saying the other dude prayed on my homeboy, you know, who who went to college and shit. My grandma instantly like, you did motherfucking what? That bitch put her hands on you? And he said, what did she use? Did she use that motherfucking bird? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, boy, come here. And grandma instantly started checking my eyes, my pupil. Grandma made me pull my pants down. Grandma grabbed my nuts and my dick. And she pulled the skin back on the bitch. You know, she looked at the motherfucker. You got bumps on it? Anything wrong? How you feel down there? And I said, Grandma, I feel good. She said, tell me, walk, walk me through. What happened to the bird? What happened to the bird? I say, it sat on my head for like 15, 20 minutes while she was doing the ritual and lighting the smoke. I say, and then it jumped off my head. It ate like three pecks of bird food and it shit it and died in front of me. She like, oh, oh, and grandma was released. She like, if that bitch would have walked up and got, if that bird would have just jumped off of you and got in that cage, say that hoe would have trapped your soul. And who knows what she could make you do in the future. And I said, no, it died. So grandma was like, thank God. So grandma slapped me like, boy, I told you don't go in there. 
Now, that was grandma ass loose. So now, fast forward. And I'm being transparent with you guys, so BG, y'all be easy on me when you get in the comments. Fast forward, it's about... It's about 2013. 2013, my baby mama, the one that abandoned my two boys, because they got the same mama. She had moved, she moves in this apartment. She moves in those apartments and she moved on the bottom floor. Not under the under the, the witch man, but by two houses down in the center part. And she over there and she's living there. So she had got on drugs real bad. She doing her shit, you know, and we feeling sorry for her. But I still kept my kids away from that lifestyle experience. Then keep them away from her. She knew where we was, but I wouldn't let them go live over there because it was so hainted. And I didn't want them on that area, in that ground. So all of a sudden, she goes, so she goes upstairs and she started fucking the voodoo man. Now, as she started fucking the voodoo man, he laying dick into her, and I think he gave her an uh, illness to this day. But I digress. So he, she's sitting up there, and she having sex with him and everything. So, cause she was on drugs real bad, and she then, and she never paid rent. She would get kicked out of everywhere. She just had a shitty life, people. You know. So he was like, she under my protection. So. I go over there and I go to look at the woman and I go to thank her because I had some money and I just wanted to like, hey, I'm off child support now. I done pay, I'm caught up on child support. Kids grown, I'm off child support. And I say, ma'am, do you mind if I just give you something? And she was like, you can give me whatever, but it's for me or for the spirit. I say, no, ma'am, this is for you. So then she say, so what you brought my spirit? And I say, uh, because I already put a money in envelope, so I'm like, uh, so I reach in my wallet and I took out a fifty dollar bill and I crumble it. She say, go put it in the circle. Yes, ma'am. Then she say, now give me my gift. Give spirit first. Give me my gift. So I gave her like twenty five hundred dollars, and I explained to her what was going on, and she gave me the biggest hug. She say, God is good. God is good. Spirit is good. She say, what I did for you, I took the Jezebel off of you. I say, what? She said, I took the Jezebel off of you. And I say, Jezebel, that's a woman's spirit. I say, I wasn't out there hooking it on. She say, no, the Jezebel attached itself to you and I took it off of you. She say, the Jezebel spirit that I took off of you, she right over there downstairs in those apartments. She there now, she suffered because of me. Listen to me, people. She suffered because of me. So I say, what? So I looked down and then I noticed that's where my baby mama was. She was under there. She said, she will ever be trapped there until she repent, until it get taken off her. So I'm like, how did, how was she able to put this on me? I got questions, you know? She said, the lady in Winter Garden, that's where they're from. She said, about the basketball court. And I'll tell y'all a story about that, people. Say, she put it on you to put you on child support because of the mama and spirit and she was lustful. And that's all they wanted to do is have babies by you to get paid by you. She say, my spirit took care of that and it went back to her. And now she suffers. My baby mama stayed in that shitty ass apartment for two, three years trying to get off drugs. Fucking that voodoo man upstairs, whatever. Until she, until her, her mother came and did something to get the shit off of her and then she was able to think clearly but the damage had already been done. So, now keep in mind, this is recent. My son is like, my son is 19 at that time. My oldest boy, he's 25 now. So this six years ago now. This lady been living that long and that man been living that long. Baby mama was just over there that recent. And I'm like, fuck. So me and my baby, me and my first baby mama, we don't have a relationship. I don't talk because now I know what she did. So, and the kids grown, so that's a whole nother topic. So now we sitting up here and I know what's going on. I'm looking at her, she looking at me. She don't know that I know that she did that shit, you know, but all in all, she, her life won the shit. 
So now my homeboy, let's get back to him. I told you how this shit affected me. Now I'm finna conclude this bitch in a second, but I want y'all to see how, how spirit aligned. Now my homeboy was having all these babies and shit. He had got into college. He was doing good, Texas University. He was doing good. Now, he was supposed to go to the college campus, fuck these hoes, and bring this man some shit back. But he got beside himself because he had got a con. He had said he was going to go into the, not the NBA, I mean, not the NFL, but he was going to go and play some shit called arena football. We had arena football heavy back then in, in Orlando. And he was going to get drafted to go play arena football or something like that. So he was like, fuck that dude, I don't need that dude, I don't got it going on. So he missed the dude's payment that he's supposed to have made, bringing the dude energy and all that shit. So all of a sudden, I'm driving past, I'm doing good in life. I see the guy go outside and on the trash, I see him like burn my homeboy jersey. Like a jersey that, well not my homeboy jersey, but a jersey from Texas. He, the Haitian voodoo, I mean the voodoo dude. The, the spiritual, the witch man, I ain't gonna say Haitian voodoo, but the, the witch man, I see him out there on the side of the road where we saw the two snakes out in the backyard burning the, the, the shirt. So he was pissed. So as I'm driving by, and I, I drove past slow too because I'm nosy as fuck. So as I drive past, I see the two snakes, the same exact snakes from all them years ago. They sit up there and they make a circle around the fire. And they just sit there and the jersey just burn. Man, tell me why that boy got injured when he signed up for his first arena football game. Broke his ankle, broke his knee, broke everything. Had to come back home, sit on the couch. And he tried to go back over there to the dude and the dude shunned him away, said gone. If you drive up there to the laundry store right up the road from that person, he's still at the store drinking beer. He's in his 40s, 44, 45. He sit up there, sit under the tree in the little thing right off Five Lane Road, right next to the corn laundry. He's an old man acting dude, and that's where his life at. And he just keep looking down the street. He won't speak to you. He won't do nothing. He'll sit there, drink his beer, and walk up the road home with a limp. So now, my baby mama, she end up doing the same thing. She would go out there to the store. She would start drinking a little beer. She would sit there for a little while. And she'll just get up and get in her car, or get call somebody, pick her up, and they'll just go. It's like they were trapped in that area because that's what they did. Now, I don't know. It's 2022. I don't know if both of those people are still living because I haven't been on that back road in a long time. But I'm telling you guys, my creepy ass experience that happened. So I'm finna root this thing down because I know I gave y'all a lot of moving parts in here. And this is going to be a long video, so I'm thanking you guys for sticking with me. So, spirit put me in a position to have what my baby mama and her mama did to me in order to, to in order to to get child support out of me. They was just taking my seat to get child support financially out of me. And the spirit told the lady to get that shit up off me. My homeboy was sitting out there making babies, but he was taking it the sex juices and energy from these girls he was fucking and he was on a payment plan in order to be famous and he was giving it to the spiritual man. Now, that's some crazy shit, people. That's some crazy shit. Either way, it didn't work out. I was divinely protected by what grandma was doing for me and this brother and this sister. They was just out there renegading in the spiritual world fucking off. Didn't know. So let that be a lesson to y'all asses. Be fucking careful of doing these spells, being nasty, trying to get people, trying to control people, trying to break people's will, trying to just fuck people. Be very careful because spirit, the universe, karma will put somebody in a place to have that shit taken up off of them and that shit will come back and bust you in your ass in the worst way. So I don't know if this story was scary, spooky, or crazy, but I can tell you that bitch is 100% true. And I feel motherfucking good, y'all. Spirit got me. And for my baby mom and my homeboy, I just pray a good prayer that they get healed from all the negative shit that they was doing out there. So, say a prayer for them, a couple of Hail Marys, and a big motherfucking God bless them.
because I'm moving on with my life and I'm happy. I'm finna end it right there. I'm tight. I'm telling you guys, stay clean because it's so goddamn easy to get dirty. Stay safe, everybody. Be blessed.